Hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Today, we're going swimming again. Yes, that's right, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV and I'm on a Hobie 14 um, because I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at the capsize writing on the Hobie 14 because the 14 is quite an easy boat to capsize. So I think it is fitting to have a look at how easy it is to bring it back upright. At the moment, the wind is probably, it is very light actually. It's, uh, let's say almost nothing, very little wind. Um, we have got a masthead float on this one, uh, as you can see up there. Uh, we've got a masthead float is because this is a school boat and like I said the 14 is easy to capsize and helping people to get the boat up from halfway rather than fully inverted is much easier and the amount of times this boat was capsizing the masthead float seemed like a very good idea so we won't be doing a full inversion but for that you can just check out the Hobie 16 full inversion in this video here. And uh, the technique is exactly the same, except you've only got one person. And the volume on the 14 is so low, your weight is gonna have a much uh, more effective effect, uh, affecting that. If I could say affect that many times. Water is fairly chilly, so I'm taking it for the team again here, guys. Um, Wish me luck. <laughs> All right, in we go. Going for the backwards. Whoa. Wow. Oh. oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting it to go over quite as quickly as that. That was very quick. So I'm, first thing is I'm just coming out from that space uh, which would have been on top of the trampoline. Um, because we've got a masthead float, it's not an issue on here. But if you haven't got one, you don't want to be in that space on top of the trampoline uh, in case the boat does invert. You could get stuck there, which would be a bad day. Um, because of the low volume in the boat, that is why we're sat at such a ridiculous angle just now. So what I'm going to have to do is get the front of the boat to come down. So I have to climb up. There we go. Okay, and because the volume in the boat is so low, it's very weight sensitive. So any small movement forwards or backwards, she's gonna let me know pretty quickly that I shouldn't be there. So I'm feeling just level with the front beam. If I'm actually at the front beam, yeah, we want to be really careful. So just a little bit back of the front beam seems about right. That was a surprising capsize. I'm going to take the capsize writing line, throw it over the hole, which is the one that's in the air. And then I'm hoping this is going to come up really easily. Um, so we are pretty much sat head to wind here. If we're not sat head to wind, two ways we can turn the boat into wind. One is we can sink the bow. Um, like I said, very gently how far forwards you're going to go because the boat could like quite easily roll over on the bows. Um, so we're just gently going to go forwards. The bow is going to sink more than the rest of the boat, turning the bow into a sea anchor and the wind will blow the trampoline, getting the boat into the wind. Um, the other way you could do it, if the boat is completely in the wrong direction, is we could go to the back of the boat and roll the boat over. That's quite extreme. We're not gonna do that just now. Uh, good idea to make sure the main sheet is released. I'm then putting the capsize right in line on my hook if you haven't got a hook, this just saves your arms a little bit. If you haven't got a hook, you can put it underneath your buttocks and then hold both parts of the rope like this. And then you've kind of made yourself a quick chair to sit on.
but because I've got a harness, I'm just gonna put the rope into my hook. I'm not gonna wrap it round or anything, but I'm just gonna hold on to both parts of the rope there. And then I'm just gonna lower myself down and hopefully this will come up really easy because the rig on the 14 is pretty light. There we go, we've got the tip out. Tip is out. As she starts coming up, I'm gonna start climbing the rope a bit. And there's the splash, pretty chilly. And she's up. Okay, so that came up pretty easily. If it had been more wind, then the thing to do would have been just to grab hold of the dolphin striker at the bottom as it came upright. But because of the direction that the boat was sitting to the wind, we did have to climb the rope a bit instead. But there we are, I'd say that was a successful test. I don't think there's any need to go through that again because we have observed there that the 14 does come up very easily, especially when we compare it to the 16. Um, probably quite a good thing to know is how heavy I am. I'm about 85, okay, 87, 88 kilos. Um, so possibly if you are a bit lighter, it's gonna be a bit harder to get it up, but you shouldn't be capsizing in wind that is this light in the first place. And um, the masthead float will make it a little bit more difficult to pull it up in the light winds because of the weight of the masthead float at the top of the mast. Yeah, so if you're a bit lighter, but you haven't got a masthead float, then it will still come up just as easily, I would say. What else would I say? I'd say about that, but you shouldn't be capsizing in wind that's this light anyway. And any more wind is gonna help you to bring the boat back upright. So there you are. All right, now all I've got to do is try to get the boat moving so we can continue our journey. So mains out, travelers out, rudders are backwards. Bit of breeze just coming there. That was the push push. Now the pull pull. Misspent youth windsurfing coming into play there and we are in motion. So there we go. Um, I hope that uh, was useful for you and informative, especially if you sail a Hobie 14 and somehow you haven't yet capsized it, then uh, hopefully that is gonna put your mind at ease a little bit to uh, say, yes, you can do it. Uh, with whatever boat you've got, if you haven't capsized and say you have got a day without much wind and it's a very safe uh, situation, perhaps there's a safety boat out or plenty of other boats out who might be able to help if you need help, then it is worth putting it in your program a capsize drill where you deliberately capsize the boat and just, especially if you're sailing in a team, go through the um, procedure of how you're gonna get the boat back upright. Um, or if you're on your own, just go through the procedure with yourself, how you're gonna get the boat back upright. Uh, worth doing in a controlled environment rather than having to do it for the first time when you're up against it for some reason, maybe you're uh, drifting downwind onto a shore or something. Worth a capsize drill. And I think on the, on the subject of safety, in your buoyancy aid, you should always be carrying a knife. Always carry a knife in your buoyancy aid, one that's not gonna cut you um, when you're not using it. But in case you do get stuck under the trampoline, then you get your knife, cut through the trampoline or cut the trampoline lacing, and then you should be all right. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Um, if you want to support the channel, just head over to totaljoyrider.com and get yourself a fresh new t-shirt 
or hoodie and that will let the world know that you love your cat sailing as much as anyone else um that would be great if you don't yet subscribe to joyrider tv well worth just hitting that subscribe button and subscribe but whether you subscribe or not please hit the like button uh, for this video and that means that more people will be able to see this video so thanks very much um be back more back more be back soon with some more soon thank you joyrider tv hobie 14 2020 oh yeah low wind action don't forget to tidy up your boat this is eight mil polyester core don't ask me how long but it's long enough in the pocket